uh, started making instruments at art college in Halifax, Nova Scotia in Canada and that was in 1975, so about 35 years ago and um, it sort of combined my interest in both music and art and craft. I play a lot of different styles of music from traditional, some classical to blues, rock, whatever, jazz, gypsy jazz. I think my design skills come into this so as uh, sort of a sort of involved with arts and drawing and painting and that sort of about appreciation of things from that point of view but it's also about listening to customers and I found particularly when I started in the mid 80s there was a lot of violinists who wanted to amplify there wasn't a very big range of pickups or ways to do that and that sort of got me started in the quest to find a solution to that. So in a way it's, it's about customer demand or customer led sort of uh, response really. I think it helps to be a musician. I think especially from the point of view of setting up an instrument you have to be from the player's perspective as to what they're asking you to do and I think if you play then you begin to appreciate what that means. A, a piece of wood and it's maple wood which is the same as the fiddle back and um, got a little template here so choose you know the area of wood for the the body of the instrument get your center, center line down there draw that out and draw the inside the outside a little bit um, next layer yeah lovely. here's a block glued on and it's cut out okay Upside down, as a matter. And then using plastic templates, I uh, use a table router and trim it back. And you can see this little edge, edge appearing here, which is the mimicking the, the overhang of the back. So here's the neck and tailpiece section, which um, start again with a selected piece of maple. The grain selection would be vertical or it's called quarter song. Um, take a template for a Violectra model and draw it out, cut it out, and cut it sideways to these two angles, faces. One is going to receive fingerboard on the neck, and the other end is going to be drilled for and machined for the, t the gears, the tuning gears. So you can see now the neck is completely finished with this model and it's been glued to the, the body and there's a little cross arch it's made out of a separate piece of wood again it's nice to use the same parts of the tree or whatever the same blocks for one instrument and, um, and the interesting bit comes with shaping the uh, model getting it to thickness you can see that it's open at the back and we turn it over again the string tension over that is going to sort of give it a bit of response it's an active physical response rather than it just being a straight through say telecaster lump of wood which is sort of absorbing rather than springing if you see mm. what I'm saying and that actually does give a response to the to the tone to the action okay so the last part of an electrical instrument is the pickup or the bridge that um, connects the transducers to the, 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 the instrument body and I make my own bridges um, out of maple inners and plate of wood on the outside to cover the hollowing out. Um, they're connected through a lead to an end jack which is mounted underneath the side. And if you tap a fork and then put it on a surface you get a note. So if you think about that, you've got a string vibration and you put it on On a solid piece of wood. What's underneath it 
is going to increase the mass of the sound. Okay, so what we're doing with my lecture is we're amplifying the resonance of the wood, the, the mass of the wood. So here's a finished my lecture, which um, I can stain to different colors using spirit dyes in a lacquer. So it's a completely carved and finished and set up. And this is the tuners again tuning the violin behind the bridge. It keeps the weight balance over the shoulder end. And one of the features of the violin is that you can practice with it in low volume. So it's